Greetings from Jerusalem. I want to thank uh, my friend Chaim for giving me the opportunity to address you. Uh, this comes at a time when uh, the United States has experienced a terrible and savage attack in uh, San Bernardino. And I wish to offer uh, the condolences of the people of Israel to the families, the aggrieved families, and of course send our wishes uh, for a speedy recovery to the wounded. The terrorists are attacking in California or in Israel, or for that matter in Paris. Uh, they're attacking the very values that we hold dear. Freedom, tolerance, diversity. All the things that define the value of life and society in our eyes, they find anathema. Uh, and that's why they attack us. Uh, I think, too, that this is what makes us strong. They think that we are hedonistic and weak. We're actually very strong societies, very resilient because of the very values that they despise so much. And these values are what makes the bond between Israel and the United States, the American people and the people of Israel so strong. It's that identity of values, those very values that are under such fierce attack today. Uh, I think nobody should underestimate the resilience and power of our societies. Nobody should underestimate the United States. It was and remains uh, and will be the leader of the world precisely because it is so rooted in the values that make societies great. And these are the same values by, by which we live, and that's why nobody should underestimate Israel, and nobody should underestimate the strength of our alliance. It's strong, and it will be even stronger in years to come. And I appreciate the, the President's willingness to forge a new agreement between Israel and the United States, a 10-year MOU to strengthen Israeli-American cooperation and strengthen Israel's security with American support. I think everybody in Israel appreciates that, beginning with me. We face uh, today two challenges that I'd like to briefly discuss with you. One is uh, a global challenge uh, of the battle of uh, militant Islamic terrorism that plagues not only the Middle East, but increasingly Europe and the United States and Asia, everywhere, Africa. And the second is the uh, specific problem of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, which I'd like to address. On the uh, global front, uh, I have to say that many used to say that the core of the conflicts in the Middle East, and from there the rest of the world, uh, were rooted in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. That was never true but it's now demonstrably false. Uh, and what we see is the old order established after the Ottoman Empire collapsing and militant Islam, either of the Shiites, uh, Shiite U led by Iran, or the uh, Sunni U led by ISIS, rushing in to fill the void. Now those two forces are clashing with each other because each wants to be the king of the Islamist hill. They hope to uh, first establish in the Middle East and after that in their mad designs throughout the rest of the world. Uh, but it nonetheless is a battle of militant Islam against other Muslims and against everyone else. Uh, that is clearly demonstrated in the case of ISIS that doesn't mince its words and is uh, disguised by Iran that has equal ambitions. The danger that we face is augmented when militant Islam gets a sovereign state because a state gives them money and oil revenues in particular for either one and it gives them the power to develop weapons or acquire weapons, chemical weapons in the case of ISIS and other sophisticated weapons and of course the quest for nuclear weapons or submarines or satellites and sundry other rockets and precision guided missiles in the case of Iran. These battles, these forces are battling each other now over the soil of Syria. Uh, and our position has been, my position has been not to intervene because an ISIS-dominated Syria is bad and an uh, Iran-dominated Syria is bad. Uh, I think that uh, our policy has been, therefore, uh, not to try to strengthen one at the expense of the other, but weaken both. But in any case, my policy has been non-intervention with two exceptions. The first is humanitarian. 
We were among the first countries to offer humanitarian aid to Syria. We established a field hospital right next to the border of uh, uh, our border of the Golan, and have taken in thousands of Syrians who've come in astounded. Uh, they were always taught that Israel uh, and Israelis were devils, and now they were healing angels. And the second thing that I've decided to, to do is to make, make it clear that Israel will not tolerate the use of Syrian territory for passing lethal weapons to Hezbollah to open up a war front against us in Lebanon, or to use Syrian territory for attacks against us, or to enable Iran to build a second terror or military front against us from the Golan or anywhere else in Syria. Uh, these are clear principles which we uphold. Uh, I've expressed also to uh, uh, President Putin of Russia that these are principles that we'll continue to uphold um, and that it makes sense that uh, Russia and Israel have deconfliction. We've done that, just as the United States has done that. But it's very important for me to stress that Israeli policy will continue along the lines that I've just outlined. If I look at the world overall, the core of the conflicts in the Middle East, that is the battle between early medievalism and modernity, is the battle that is being waged now around the world. And the advanced countries in the world, the civilized countries of the world, have to make common cause to contain and ultimately defeat militant Islam. Deep down, human beings want to uh, have freedom. And I think the, that desire and the uh, technology of freedom, the spread of information, will ultimately defeat militant Islam, just as it defeated another murderous uh, ideology bent on world domination, Nazism. In the case of Nazism, uh, it, it took down about 60 million people and a third of our own people before it went down. And this can allow, cannot allow to happen again. Um, I think it won't happen again, one, because we have the historical antecedents, and two, because we have the state of Israel, as far as the Jewish people are concerned. We will not allow any one of these uh, violent medievalist uh, forces to uh, threaten our country and threaten our people. Insofar as the Palestinian-Israeli conflict is concerned, I think there is another misunderstanding. Uh, people have uh, long said that the core of this conflict uh, is the uh, acquisition of territories by Israel in the 1967 war. That's an issue that needs to be addressed in any, uh, any peace process, as is the question of settlements. But it's not the core of the conflict. In Gaza, nothing changed. In fact, instead of getting peace, we gave territory and got 15,000 rockets on our heads. Uh, we took out all the settlements. We disinterred people from their graves. And did we get peace? No. We got the worst terror possible. Uh, I think that happened um, earlier, too, when we left Lebanon. And people said, well, if you leave Lebanon, then uh, Hezbollah will uh, make peace with you. And in fact, we got 15,000 rockets from there, too. And so people are naturally saying, look, if we want a solution vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Palestinians in Judea Samaria and the West Bank, how can we ensure that this doesn't happen again? Well, in order for us to ensure that it doesn't happen again, we have to address the root cause of the problem. Why has this conflict not been resolved for a hundred years? Why has it not been resolved after successive Israeli prime ministers, six in fact, after the Oslo Agreement, have offered to make peace, have offered the Palestinians the possibility of building a state next to Israel, it's because the Palestinians have not yet been willing to cross that conceptual uh, bridge, that emotional bridge of giving up the dream, not of a state next to Israel, but a state instead of Israel. And that's why they persistently refuse, not only Hamas in Gaza, but the PA, they consistently refuse to accept that in the final peace settlement, they will recognize the Jewish state. They will recognize a nation state for the Jewish people. They ask that we recognize a nation state for the Palestinian people, but refuse to accord that same right to us. I have said, and I continue to say, that ultimately the only workable solution is not a unitary state, but a demilitarized Palestinian state 
that recognizes the Jewish state. That's the solution. But the Palestinians have to recognize the Jewish state, and they persistently refuse to do so. They refuse to recognize a nation state for the Jewish people in any boundary that was and remains the core of the conflict. Not this or that gesture, or the absence of this or that gesture, but the inability or unwillingness of the Palestinian leadership to make the leap. You got a hint of that the other day when Abu Mazen spoke about the occupation of Palestinian lands for the last 67 years. Did you hear that? Occupation of Palestinian lands for the last 67 years? 67 years ago was 1948. That's when the State of Israel was established. Does Abu Mazen mean that Tel Aviv has occupied Palestinian territory? Or Haifa? Or Beersheba? Uh, he refuses to fess up to his people and say, it's over. From their point of view, what they say are the borders they wish, the final borders they wish. They refuse to recognize that they will have no more claim on the territory of the Jewish state, that they will not try in any way to flood it with the descendants of refugees. After all, we in Israel took in an equal and even larger number of Jewish refugees from Arab lands. I mentioned, I mentioned this uh, point about mutual national recognition because it is so fundamental. And like the mantra that was raised time and time and time again, that the core of the conflict, always in the singular, the conflict in the Middle East was the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, that has turned out to be even childish and irrelevant. The same thing I'm saying will happen with the argument about uh, the core of the conflict being the settlements or the territories. They're an issue to be resolved, but they're not the core of the conflict. And I think it's important, if we're ever going to resolve this issue, is to demand from the Palestinian leadership to recognize the Jewish state. We'll still have many, many issues to resolve, but it begins with the recognition of the right of the Jewish people to have a state of their own. This is the fundament of peace. And the absence of this recognition is the real obstacle. I don't lose hope. Uh, you can't be a leader of the Jewish people and not have hope because we've overcome so many travails uh, in the last uh, thousands of years and in the last hundred years. We have uh, clawed our way back to a sovereign existence. We've built a remarkable state. It's a world leader in technology and agriculture and irrigation and cyber and medicine and so many areas. Uh, and we've made peace with two countries, uh, Jordan and Egypt. And as the picture that I described about the threat of militant Islam to uh, Arab and Muslim society emerges, we are making inroads in a lot of contacts with Arab countries, a lot of contacts that are not Arab countries as well. The leading countries of Asia, China, India, Japan, dozens of African countries, uh, countries in Latin America. And it's heartening. It's heartening to see how Israel is being received and how people are changing their view of Israel as they change their view of the essential conflict between medievalism and modernity that is now spreading through in the entire world. But I know with all the openness that we have with uh, dozens and dozens of countries, including in our own region, I still know that we have no better friend than the United States. This is a partnership of solid values. It's the deepest partnership there is. I value it across the uh, partisan divide. Democrats, Republicans, independents, we cherish your support. We value it. And we believe that this partnership between Israel and the United States of America is the axis around which many other partnerships can be built in our region and beyond for the betterment of all humanity. Thank you.